The title of this lecture is Money Talks, and it is about, about the activist tool boycott. And what a boycott is, is uh, really an attempt to hit corporations where it hurts. Um, we often, as activists, lament the level of power and control corporations have over us, and sometimes don't realize the level of power and control we can have if we work together in a coordinated effort over corporations um, when we are able to affect their bottom line. So I want to give you a couple of examples of um, when the boycott has been an effective tool for feminism. The Montgomery bus boycott is one example of an oppressed people using their powers as consumers to demand social change. Now, a lot of people have learned some version of this story in high school, and it goes something like this. In December 1955, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat for a white man on the Montgomery, Alabama public bus. She was subsequently jailed, and, um, and protests began around this issue. Now, textbooks do emphasize the role of former leaders, formal leaders, excuse me, like Martin Luther King and other men who were at the head. Um, but the role of women is less understood. Um, one of the important things to note is that Rosa Parks was not simply a woman who was tired, although I'm sure she was very tired that tired of, um, of racial oppression that day. She was a trained activist who had a long history of social and political um, involvement. And the bus boycott was, of course, about segregation, but for black women, it was also about the verbal and sexual assault that they were facing on buses. And while men were often the formal leaders, a lot of the grassroots organizers and those the sort of middle level people were, were in huge numbers women because they were so concerned about those issues. Now, um, the boycott lasted 381 days. So you can imagine um, the level of organization and commitment it takes from a community to abstain from public transportation for almost an entire year. Um, but it did end up working. Um, the boycott ended in 1956 when the Supreme Court um, finally um, decided on Browder versus Gale, which integrated public transportation. A lot of times when we learn the history of the civil rights movements and we hear about these Supreme Court cases, it's presented to us as if the court case um, is what really, ch or the Supreme Court is who really changed these things. But we again want to keep in mind that the context is one of continued activism and continued pressure on public funds exerted by the black community, particularly in the case of the Montgomery bus boycott. They used what little financial power they had to really um, put a significant amount of pressure on the city and also the nation. Well, the second, and so when you think about a boycott, um, it's really a way of, in the same way that a strike is is about um, forming a collective that is powerful enough to take on the employer. This is about forming a collective that is powerful enough to take on um, a corporation, but now as consumers. The second example that I wanted to talk to you about is the 1965 to 1970 grape boycott. Um, and, this, and this was coordinated actually with a, the strike of grape pickers in Delano, California. Um, now for some time, the United Farm Workers had been there organizing farm workers who were concerned about low pay, um, substandard housing, and hazardous conditions. So um, in addition to being paid very little, uh, many farm workers were living in, in housing that was actually provided by the growers themselves um, that lacked running water um, and basic infrastructure. The hazardous conditions um, is a really important thing to emphasize. One of the biggest issues for the United Farm Workers was the use of pesticides and insecticides and in fact the growers would spray D the toxic chemical DDT over fields while people were working um, without even protective clothing. And as you can imagine, 
this was extremely um, deleterious to the health of the workers. And there wasn't much that they could do. They had been picketing for a long time, uh, but the grape growers still managed to bring in strike breakers. They managed to paint the union as unreasonable and violent. Um, racism was a, gave them a lot of aid in that regard um, because they were able to um, to essentially dehumanize the farm workers. Um, another piece of it was that the farm workers often lacked citizenship and therefore were very, or, or didn't speak English and were very afraid to come forward. Um, and so there wasn't much action until they got hit from the other side. So the United Farm Workers um, decided to up their campaign and coordinated a worldwide boycott of grapes. And um, it sounds pretty amazing, and it was. Um, throughout the world, people picketed grocery stores who carried table grapes, um, tried to disrupt through protests the unloading of grapes, um, and eventually succeeded in convincing you know, dock workers in Europe not to unload grapes because of the abuses against workers in California. Um, they convinced a number of grocery stores to stop selling grapes. And by 1969, the price of grapes had very significantly declined. Um, there's, there's, as with, um, as with, I think, the Montgomery bus boycotts, the role of women is really understated when we look at the history. We talked a little bit about, in this class already, about um, how everybody knows the name Cesar Chavez, who was one of the founders of the United Farm Workers. Not as many people know the name Dolores Huerta, and she really was a co-founder. She also was very instrumental in the boycott. So um, she was the leader of the New York boycott, work, working um, with the stores there and trying to get publicity for their movement there. Um, the more typical, and it was very unusual for the United Farm Workers to have a woman at the head. The more typical situation, which was the situation in Denver, was um, where the boycott was led by Alfredo and Juanita Herrera, is that Alfredo Herrera was the um, official leader, and Juanita was doing all of the work anyway, but in a lot of ways, under the guise of traditional femininity as a supporter. Um, you know, it still was never easy for any of these um, women who are fighting for freedom to um, sign up, sign up with a union that they knew was running out of money, um, and and worry about where the next meal was going to come from for their children in order to do what was right. Um, and I tried to find some more details um, on Juanita Herrera, and I wasn't really able to. Um, I do want to keep looking. The only thing that I found was um, some comments that were made by someone named Juanita Herrera at Cesar Chavez's vigil in Denver, um, but I don't have a way to confirm that it was the same person. And so I want you to think about all of the male names that you know, and, um, and then think about all the female names that you may not know, and that, uh, quite honestly, I've had some trouble finding details on. So these are the two historical examples, and then I want to bring you to a contemporary example of a boycott. The good news about the Great Boycott was that it was it was incredibly effective. There was a worldwide decline in the price of grapes, and the United Farm Workers were successful in banning DDT um, entirely. Um, so they got they actually did get many of their demands met. Um, farm work is still an incredibly underpaid um, and difficult labor and still I and still um, what do I want to say and still very much um, relies on racism against um, Chicanos in order to um, facilitate its labor abuses. Now, I want to give you a contemporary example of a boycott and ask you to think about evaluating um, how it might work. There is a movement afoot right now for um, that's called the BDS movement. It stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, and this is a movement to encourage Israel to respect the rights of Palestinians. And, um, and so 
what it really is, is, is encouraging people worldwide to sign the pledge not to invest in Israel, not to buy Israeli goods, um, and not to participate in an economy that is built off of, off of the colonization of the Palestinian people. Their demands are fairly simple and straightforward. They're calling simply for Israel to respect the UN resolutions and the international law that has already um, been put in place. Where it becomes complicated is that, um, as with so many conflicts where activists are struggling, this is, they are fighting f very formidable and um, very rich allies, specifically the United States, who um, continues to funnel an enormous amount of military support to Israel, primarily to secure its, uh, its um, position in a region that they believe, that it believes is oil rich. And um, and so the the movement now is starting to include um, some U.S. U.S. academic professional associations, including the National Women's Studies Association. And this is the aspect that I want to ask you about. I want you to look at um, at both the. BDS movement call, um, read a little bit more about it and understand what is happening. Um, and then also look at the National Women's Studies Association um, solidarity statement. And the question that I that I that I want you to think about is does this make sense for US academics to be involved in a boycott? Um, is the, and more importantly, is this going to be the most effective form of activism? You know, we've seen, um, we saw very clearly that the Montgomery bus boycotts um, were effective in putting pressure on governments and on the Supreme Court. We also saw that the grape boycotts were effective in putting pressure on the grape growers. Now, will this movement for boycott to, for BDS um, eventually be effective in in, pers in swaying the situation in Israel and Palestine? That is the question. So once again, go through here, um, look at some of the additional materials. I also want to point out um, the bibliography that's at the end of this PowerPoint. If at any point you want to know more about any of these issues, these are the books that I recommend, the books and articles that I recommend. You can always read tons more. Okay, Generation Palestine will teach you just about everything you need to know about the BDS movement. Um, from the Jaws of Victory um, will teach you a lot about the United Farm Workers movement, although um, not as much about the role of women. Um, and at the dark end of the street, um, we'll teach you more about Black women's activism against rape and violence against women. So please check out um, all the embedded links and check out the bibliography when you have a chance, and especially if you want to know more or write more about any of these issues.